Welcome back to XRP Vault, where we offer you the most exciting and latest XRP news. You may enter to win 10,000 XRP by viewing the entire video, upvoting, subscribing, commenting with the phrase XRP is king, then upvoting again. The winners will be chosen the following month and announced on the channel's community page. Therefore, the SEC will lose this lawsuit for the reasons that Judge Torres, John Deaton, Eleanor Tourette, Fox Business, and the SEC have all contributed. Jeremy Hogan couldn't believe it when the judge snapped and ordered them to turn over the Hinman emails, but I'll outline some of the decisions that just came down from the judges in this video as well as how one tweet that was just sent out essentially ended the SEC's case. I'll also tell you what the SEC just filed and what it just filed in response to its objection. Right now, this case is shaping up. I'll now explain why I think this case is essentially over and how all these things simply led to that conclusion. Hello everyone, I'm Randy. Welcome back to the Late Night Grind. On this channel, we're currently following the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit as well as other news on cryptocurrencies, financial markets, and personal finances. Therefore, if any of these topics, or all of them, interest you, be sure to go ahead and join the Late Night Grind group. Then, click the subscribe button and the bell notification symbol on YouTube, which will alert you anytime Lisa uploads a new video and, of course, feed you a few things. Please click the thumbs up button and view the entire video. Check out my Patreon link in the paragraph below, of course. These are the finest things you can do to support a YouTube channel, so if you do them all, I'd really, really love it. Having said that, let's get started. Therefore, I'm going to begin this video by discussing the documents that the SEC just submitted with the courts. And since the SEC wants to keep everything hidden, they are objecting to Judge Nepper's ruling that they must produce and turn over the correspondence surrounding Bill Hinman's speech. There must be some juicy information in there, as Judge Nepper has done so five, six, or seven times throughout this legal dispute. They actually sent a letter to the judge a few days ago, requesting essentially a 30-page response. They submitted their response in the 20-page minimum required by the judge. I saw a table of contents as soon as I opened it. I thus understood straight away that they would try to do a lot of explaining and mental gymnastics with this one. As a result, as they went through it, they essentially repeated what they had said thus far in the case. But I also saw that they essentially abandoned the claim of client privilege that the judges had previously rejected. Currently, they are returning to the DPP, or Deliberative Process Privilege, which enables the SEC and other governmental institutions to keep information secret when formulating legislation or pre-decisional laws. Therefore, they are returning to it, but the amusing part is that Jeremy Hogan actually made this observation on Twitter, stating that it appears that the SEC has actually produced a fourth version of what this Bill Hinman speech was, yes, a fourth. As a result, the SEC is now providing another another explanation of what it is, despite the fact that judges have already called out the SEC for its duplicity. This one is fresh because, although being entirely backwards, it appears like they are becoming a bit more skilled. Therefore, they are now claiming that Bill Hinman's statement is only applicable to the portion of the SEC where he served as chairman of the director of the Division of Enforcement and is not applicable to the remainder of the SEC, Jeremy. Okay, this is a new one, I thought. Therefore, it is not truly an opinion, rather, it is advice that is intended just for the Division of Enforcement and not for the General Secretary get it right. If you genuinely want to read their entire 20-page response, I'll provide a link in the explanation below. Before we look at the tweet and video that Eleanor sent out, you should read a Fox Business article that essentially simply flattened the Southeast Sea's argument. I want to discuss the response your tour had in relation to John Dean. Currently, John Dean is attempting to intervene in this case with Representative 68, representing almost 69,000 XRP investors, but the SEC does not want him to do so at all. The judge's ruling says no, John Deaton and the XRP holders may participate in this lawsuit. They are not in any way prohibited, despite their attempts to have them removed from it. Thus, they turned down the SEC's request. 
The SEC's Expert Witness Challenge, one of the most recent challenges, won't be open to John Deaton, according to Judge Torres. Nevertheless, she omitted to mention that John Dean and the XRP holders can submit their Amici report when it is time for summary judgment, which means that then is the more crucial moment to discuss and refute the SEC's expert witnesses. John Deaton and the other XRP holders will only be heard at summary judgment when both parties file their applications for summary judgment. Therefore, that is excellent news for XRP owners. The SEC will not stop delivering bad news to XRP investors. You ought to be aware of it by now. Let's go on to the tweet that was put out by Fox Business Personnel because, if you haven't been following this issue, it basically sums up the entire incident in one sentence. She basically made the same argument that Jeremy Hogan did and supported it with a video. In order to present all sides of the story fairly and equally, Eleanor Turret, a Fox Business reporter, and Charles Gasparino have been covering this subject. They have also made an effort to get in touch with persons involved and clarify any ambiguities. Additionally, Eleanor Turret has been delving deeper and deeper into the cryptocurrency world. You can go check it out on her Twitter account. She recently had John Deaton on an interview about a 30-minute interview yesterday. She actually brought up a similar idea along with Jeremy Hogan and some of the other lawyers we follow on Twitter. She actually made a similar observation since something about this simply doesn't feel right. Now that the SEC is actually saying that Bill Hinman's speech wasn't his opinion, we were just joking about it being market guidance, but only for his particular division, not for the entire SEC, because Ellie then tweeted out the quote from the SEC, which was, the speech was not binding SEC policy that is a pronouncement of the commission itself, the commissioners appointed by the president. Ellie then included a clip of Jay Clayton, the SEC chairman at the time, speaking, with the Senate's approval and guidance. This speech was delivered just a few days after Bill delivered his remarks, which, as you may recall, are not legally obligatory on the SEC or its commissioners. However, Jay Clayton had the following to say about that speech. Recently, Bill Hedman described the process we use to determine if a digital asset is a security. Additionally, I urge you to view Bill's speech, which is posted on our website. Informing his audience that Bill just delivered a speech stating, No, this is how the SEC perceives how we come to determinations on what is a security and what is not a security. The head of the SEC is telling his audience right from the horse's mouth. People on Twitter and YouTube are now stating that it appears the SEC has to close this up as soon as possible because there are simply too many variables working against it. It appears the SEC was just caught again. Every turn, every action, they're actually losing it, and it's getting worse by the week. In fact, I just saw an interview with Jimmy Valley of Valhalla Capital where he discussed this very issue, the Ripple v. SEC case. And recently, a lot of people stopped paying attention to him since he was the one who was discussing a $35,000 XRP, and a lot of the information was misinterpreted. But even so, I saw an interview where he mentioned that in the coming weeks, you are likely going to witness some sort of market incident in which Congress and several other agencies will get involved in this case and say that this needs to be resolved right away because we'll need some clarity on XRP in the rest of the space. This is an interesting perspective from Jimmy Valley from Val Hill Capital something. Let me check again after this. No, no, no. Jerome Powell and the Fed have yet to make a statement on the timing or magnitude of the rate increase. That will most likely be in my future video, then. Keep an eye out for it. Okay, people. I really appreciate you watching this video through to the finish and clicking the thumbs up button. I'll see you all in the upcoming video, as usual.